Hello, and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. I'm going to start off this morning by asking you a question. Where do you keep your instruments when you're not using them? Where do you store them? Where do you lay them down if, say, you play for a little while, and then you're going to not play for an hour or so, and then you're going to go back to playing again, which I would expect new students to do, because they can't practice very long at a time, because their lips aren't strong enough for it. So what do you do with your instruments? Well, I have some things that will help you to preserve your instruments and take care of them. The safest way to take care of an instrument if it's not in use is to put it in its case. And there are two types of cases. There are hard cases and there are soft cases. So let me show you. This is a piccolo case. It's for one of my instruments and it's a hard case. Very hard, but in the inside, it's soft. And you may not be able to see this because of the darkness of the color, but there are indentations where the instrument lays. You can even see, although I'm not sure you can pick it up, you can even see uh, little holes where the keys brush up against the top. This is the bottom half, and this is the top half. And it's very designed, so it's just designed specifically for the instrument, so you can put the instrument in it. It fits perfectly. And when it fits perfectly, there's no extra room for the instrument to be sliding around. And so this is what a hard case would be. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about a hard case. I don't know if, if Rick's going to try to get a close-up of this or not. But at any rate, I want to tell Pardon? We can see it. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, I can't always tell with the lights on me what you can see, what, what you can't see. I had a student who's playing, one of my students who's playing flute, and she had it in a hard case, and I'm very thankful for that. The hard case protected it. She lost it. She, she went to a bus stop. And the school was in session, but it was a snowstorm. They hadn't canceled school, and she was at a bus stop waiting with several other children to take a bus to go to her particular school. This bus went to several schools. She had her flute with her in a hard case. Well, she uh, a lot. She forgot it. She put it down in the snow. Not a great idea, but she did. And then she took off without it. She got home and realized she did not have her flute. She couldn't find it anywhere. The next next day she had a lesson with me. She came into the lesson crying and her mother was spouting off steam, very angry. She lost her flute. We don't know what she did with it. She can't find it anywhere. I, we just paid for it. It's an expensive flute and all of that. You can imagine. Well, it was in a hard case. You can see when I closed it that it made a snapping sound. This particular case does not have a handle, so you just open it by pressing on these, these uh, locks, and if you press just right, it will open up. But at any rate, she had it in the case, and it was in the snow. Now, a superintendent or a, a principal of one of the schools drove by, and they saw something sticking out from the snow. He didn't know what it was, but he thought it was maybe a lunchbox that a child had left behind, so he picked it up and he brought it into the school, which was not the school she was in, but he was principal of another school. They all used the same bus stop, evidently, and he found out that it was a flute. She, he opened it up and had, fortunately for her, her name, her address, her telephone number. She got the flute back because of that. It was not damaged. It was in fine shape. There was no damage at all. If she had had a soft case, which is usually made out of some kind of cloth or plastic, what would she get? Well, the instrument could have been soaked. She could have damaged some of the keys or some of the pads and had to have them replaced. Her name and address and all of that information would have been smudged. And as a result of that, uh, she might not have gotten her flute back or the principal would not have known who it belonged to, would not have been able to trace it back to her. Now, if you look at this hard case, you can see the latches. You press the latches in whatever way it is. It's either together, toward, or after. And I'm going to see if I can open it here. It's an older case. But if you press it right, 
you can get it open, but I had to put it in my lap to do it because I, I couldn't get the right grip on it without it. And it opens up. Now, most of the hard cases also have handles. This is so small because it's a piccolo case that it does not have a handle. And it has a little place here for the body, a little place here for the head joint, and it has a little indentation here for a tuning rod. So I mean, I'm sorry, a cleansing rod. So you can, you know, wipe it off after you've used it and you just simply snap it shut. And it's perfectly protected. I prefer to have handles. I'm not putting the piccolo in it because I've got it in another case that I like a little better. But there's nothing wrong with this case and it's a perfect example of a hard case. A soft case would be something like this. This had a Sopranino in it. It's made out of plastic, has a picture of the Sopranino, and it's zippered. It does have a zipper to it. And it doesn't keep it safe, really, but it does keep it kind of enclosed, so it does protect it from dust and so forth. And uh, this is the kind of case that you can get for a certain kind of recorders. I have other soft cases. They're shaped a little different, but they're plastic like this. You see you can bend it and so forth. If you whacked it, you could hurt something in it. It's not that protective. I do have... A, uh, a soft case for my sa one of my saxophones. One of my saxophones is historic. And as years have gone by, they've changed slightly the dimensions of the saxophones, which they do with many instruments. Sometimes it's because they want to add extra keys and they have to change the shape of the instrument to be able to accommodate the extra keys or they want extra rods or whatever it is. They have a reason for doing it. Now, it doesn't make a big difference if you look at it. A saxophone is going to look like a saxophone, but the dimensions may be slightly different. So to put it in a hard case, I couldn't do it. I couldn't find a hard case that would fit it because of the change of dimension. So I got a soft case for it. But the cloth is thick and it does protect. And there are straps on it, so it does. It is protective. It's not as you know as as non-protective as these are. This is probably one of the worst of the soft cases. It's just cloth. And it has on it Yamaha, that's the name of the instrument, it is a recorder, and it says Soprano Descant Recorder Baroque. What does it mean? Well, it, it tells you what you just bought. It tells you what it is. I made a photocopy. Yamaha Soprano is also called a Descant Recorder. You can use that term for a Soprano Recorder. It's also called a Descant. And then it says Baroque. And the Baroque tells you that this is a Baroque instrument and not a German instrument. It wouldn't make any difference in the size or the shape of the instrument. Baroque instruments look exactly the same. They're exactly the same size as, uh, as a regular instrument. There's no difference in the way that they look. By looking at them, you would not be able to tell what, what, it, whether it was a German or a Baroque. The fingering pattern is a little different, so the whole structure is a little different for the tone hole but that's the only difference. It doesn't change the overall size or shape of the instrument, but it does tell you what you've got. And it says here, recorder was made in Indonesia and the bag was made in India. And it's a Japanese recorder. So it has a real international flair, you might say. This is the cloth one. And it does have a little pull, a little pull on the top. And it doesn't it doesn't really tighten it up much. It might tighten it up a little, but nothing that you want to brag about. You know, it just kind of closes the top of it so it's less likely to get lost. But this is a real soft case. And we're finding that more and more of the student instruments are actually made out of cloth. Well, where should you leave your instrument? Though That's the information on hard and soft cases. The hard cases are definitely safer, they're definitely better, but a lot of instruments, they send them without a cloth case. Some of them, they just send them wrapped up in, in some kind of a foil and they don't have a case at all. I've taken to making cases for my recorders. I use the... Um, uh, well, maybe I can show you here. No, I guess I can't. I thought I had something with me I don't have. But the the uh, paper rollers that you get for kitchen 
uh, towel wraps, you know, it comes on a roller and it's about this long. That's a real good thing to make a case out of. I plug one end and I tape it securely so the plug won't fall out and just put the instrument on the top. And then if I put several together, they can all stand up together in, say, a wider container. And so it's a good way to keep them. What you, I'm afraid of is some people who just put their instruments down. They don't care where they put them. They're not using them. Put them on the table. Somebody else comes by, and they, they throw stuff on top of it. It's kind of like a catch-all for anyone who's coming in and out of the house, and it's got stuff on top of it or it rolls off, which a recorder can easily do because they're circular. They don't have anything to stop them from rolling. These are the things you should not do. Do not leave your instrument on a windowsill where the sun comes in and bakes it. Remember the sun hitting glass, it becomes hotter. It can really damage an instrument. Don't leave an instrument even on the floor below a window, especially if it's an outside wall. The same thing can happen. It also can get way too cold. You would be surprised, especially in older homes, how many, how much of the cold air or how much of the hot air actually seeps through the walls of an outside wall. Because if it's an older home, the, the insulation may have settled. There may not have been insulation to begin with or not enough of it. It wasn't well packed enough. And so a lot of the temperature of the outside air, hot or cold, will come in through the walls and by the windows, especially if the windows aren't tight. That's why they say make sure your windows are tight because you could lose a lot of heat. But if you have an instrument in front of a window, even if it's on the floor, it can get a lot of the temperature from the outside, whether it's too hot or whether it's too cold. It'll get it, and it's very damaging to an instrument not to have it in room temperature. All instruments should be left in room temperature, 60s, 70s. That would be about the way that it should be. Now, uh, if you have a large instrument like a piano, and I realize a lot of people can't do this because of the size and the structure of their homes, but if you have a piano, it's better not to put it on an outside wall for the same reason that I wouldn't want you to leave other instruments there. It picks up too much of the temperature of the outside air, too cold or too hot. And the extremes of temperature are really not good for an instrument. It will damage pads and the woodwinds. It will damage uh, strings on a guitar, strings on a piano. A piano has lots of strings in it. It can be very, very damaging. Do not leave an instrument on a place where it can slide off or a place where someone's going to put other things on it unthinking and end up by pushing it off or putting stuff on top of it. It needs to be clear. If you're going to leave it on a hard surface like a table, that's all right if you know that it's not going to be damaged because somebody's piling their books on it or whatever it is that they're doing. And it's always better to have a thick towel underneath so that there is is some softness. This is why you use a hard case. A hard case is very hard on the outside, but it's very soft on the inside, and so it's much better for the instrument. It's not getting pressed down. It's not on a hard surface. So put a heavy towel down if you're going to put an instrument on top of a table and leave it in room temperature. If you do that, you can leave it for a long time. If you're taking it out, always take it out in a case. Put it back in the case. Don't travel in the weather without having the instruments protected. That's what you need to do. So you have to be careful. Never put an, an instrument in an attic or an instrument in a cellar. An attic is going to get boiling hot like a sauna in the summer because you usually don't have air conditioning in an attic and you may not even have your windows open and it's just like baking up there. And and uh, with the cellar, it's the same way. But with a cellar, you usually have it moist. There's a lot of, of moisture that comes in from the furnaces, from whatever it is that you have down there, the washing machine and all of that. 
It's easy to get a lot of mold. Mold makes people sick, and it also damages instruments, and you would not want to play an instrument and have to wipe off mold. It's very damaging to the instrument. It's very damaging to yourself. And also, of course, the severe temperature changes that you have in an attic, in, an, in a cellar, both hot and cold, same thing. And don't ever leave your instruments in a car. If you leave the windows up, it'll bake in there. It's way, way too hot. Or it'll be freezing cold and if it's in the weather, if it's in the winter. I will only leave an instrument in a car if the temperature is going to be right and not damaging, and only for a very short period of time. If, for example, I have to go somewhere or I have an appointment, I can't get the instrument instruments home before, because usually when I do something with instruments, I take them back home, I place them, and then I go back out again if I have to go back out. So the instruments are not left unattended in a car. It's easy for somebody to steal an instrument. But when you've got wood, and you've got metal, even metal will crack with too much heat. I used to hate it. I mean, I love being in bands, I love being in parades, but I used to hate it uh, on Thanksgiving and Christmas, when you had the Christmas parades and the Thanksgiving parades. It was usually, in that part of the country, very, very, very cold. And by the time you finished marching a short distance, most of the instruments were so frozen that they wouldn't be able to play more than two notes because the keys couldn't move. They were frozen. The other thing was to have instruments out in bad weather when you're marching in a football game. I used to do all these marches during football games with the halftime shows. In fact, I designed a lot of the halftime shows. And it was interesting and it was fun. But if was raining and snowy, you really would damage the music, it would be all runny, you'd damage the instrument because the pads were soaking, and I know we used to wear plastic uh, containers almost, you know, like plastic raincoats, and hold our instruments underneath the plastic so they wouldn't get so wet, but occasionally you'd have to play and take them out from undercover, and they'd get soaking. I've often thought in bad weather that they shouldn't have parades or they shouldn't have instruments playing in the parades because it was too damaging to the instruments. I know most of my friends and myself included, we had another set of instruments. I have four or five clarinets. I have six or seven saxophones. Now I would have one saxophone, one type of saxophone, one type of clarinet that I use just for marching. It wouldn't be my most expensive one, but it would be just for that purpose so there would only be one instrument, not dozens over a period of time that would get too wet. That would limit the damage to one instrument and I used to dry them off as soon as I got in the house. I used to just put them on towels and dry them up. I'd take the music and I'd kind of peel it off because it was wet and lay it down. Don't touch it, just let it dry naturally. It might be crinkly, but you still would have the music. So there are all the kinds of things, you know, to consider when you're trying to protect an instrument. If you protect it well enough, your instrument will last for years and years and won't require much repair. But like any instrument, some repair would be necessary. It's just the name of the game. Things wear out, things break, and all of that. But if you take good care of an instrument, it will last you for a long, long period of time. And the, my saxophones, the oldest ones, well, they're older than me. They're quite a bit older than me, and I'm in my 80s. They were old before I started to play. I started to play saxophone and had saxophone lessons when I was like in the third or fourth grade. That's what I wanted to do. All I wanted to do was play the saxophone. And we had piano lessons available, which I also took and all of that. But my real interest was the woodwinds. And so I borrowed woodwinds. My parents borrowed saxophones. And the first saxophone they bought me was very, very old. And you know, my saxophones still play, but I've been taking care of them for all of these years. So it's well worth your time to take care of the instruments. Don't put them near a hot 
please don't lay them around where there's a stove, a wood stove, just because it'll keep them dry. It's gonna overheat them. Uh, just keep them in even temperatures. Try not to put them on a wall, uh, an outside wall because that's more dangerous than you realize. It may be warm where you are, but it may be cold or too hot where the instrument is. Don't leave them on windowsills. Don't leave them in places where they can drop off or where or they can roll off or where people won't realize that that's where they are and they just nonchalantly drop something on a table. You know, don't leave them where they're going to be excess of cold. And I know I had an instrument that uh, was in a car that my nephews and nieces had. They played with it when they were traveling and they finally gave it to me because it wouldn't work. And I'm asking myself, why would it? It was treated terribly because it was too hot and it was too cold. I was able to bring it back so it would play and it plays very well now, but I had to be very careful how I did it. I treated it like you would treat a human being, very gently, a little bit of blowing, stopping it, not doing too much, and letting it get to the point where it would squeal, it would make a little noise, but not much, and when it started making little noises, I thought it could repair. I thought it would be able to be normal again. So I worked at it, and then it would play one note, and then in a week or two, it would play two notes, and on and on it went. So I rehabilitated it. Now, I don't know how much you can do with some instruments like that, but I have had some success in rehabilitating some instruments just by being real careful with them. But why not be careful with them to begin with so they don't get into a mess to begin with? You know, take care of them, and they will be good to you. Well, I guess I better close it here because I don't... Um, I don't have enough time to really get into anything, and we'll start doing music again next time. But occasionally, I like to do a review because I think it's really important that you take note of things that you just might be careless of and not even give it a thought. So I'll close it here. Please join me next time.